Hello! Alright, back again! <laughs> That's fantastic, just about to start, uh... Sh uh, Shimera's bot has just started freaking out in the chat, so... This is gonna be a good stream. Looks as incoherent as I am. So yeah, um... No video. No video from Entropy Ad, really? AV okay from Pontepem. Sorry, Entropy. I think it's you. Um, so yeah, good to see you again. Let's see who's hanging out with us tonight. Come on, there we go. So hey, Bremans, Jace, Entropyad, uh, Barrett, Sergeant Queef, Chimera, uh, Van Laser, and Zulu. Good to see you all. Uh, so yeah, I've had a couple of weeks off, feeling kind of mildly crappy. Like, just crappy enough that I didn't want to do streaming. And so I was feeling better this week, so obviously the most sensible thing to do the night before a stream is to go out and drink far too many Guinnesses and then feel kind of, yeah, today. So we're going to take it kind of easy. And luckily the um, topic I've picked is fairly simple. So we should be able to hammer this out without too much drama. Um, so yes, this is again, this is a bit of a little bit of an experiment because most of the streams so far I've tried to keep relate like vaguely relevant like it's we're doing some kind of rendering thing that might be applicable somewhere else this time i i really just wanted to hack on some kettle stuff and so yeah outside of working on kettle this will be useless to everyone but I'm, I'm really glad you guys came down and uh yeah let's just chill out and i will be liberally applying coffee and other juices and uh we'll see how this goes let's see what is going on in the chat yep everyone else seems to Okay, Entropy's got uh, got a video now. Excellent. Everyone's there. Oh yeah, that um, Twitch not updating the video. Yeah, I don't know why. The, I, the, it seems like such a trivial thing for them to get right. The stream started, refresh the browser page. You know, kick everything off for everyone. Um, Pond of Pimp is back in force with the gifts. So, good man. Yes, M medicinal medicinal coffee will be applied for yesterday's medicinal. Me ah, can't even words. There are no words. There is no English, there is only Zool. So let's get started. Okay, so the goal right now is, so we've got this really simple um, pipeline over here. We'll step through because it's been a couple of weeks. So what we're doing um, in this program is, we're, we're at, some, at some point loading a texture. So we're just uh, loading a texture and sampling that and sticking it in this variable. Um, we are then making a GPU function, we're going to use our vertex um, stage. It's a very simple one, it takes a vector 2. And um, like what we're going to pass into here is data for a quad. And it's going to calculate the UVs from the quad coordinates and pass those down to the fragment shader. The fragment shader is just going to sample um, our texture, those given UVs. And this is the pipeline that's just saying how to use them. Now. One thing I was thinking is a little, not a major problem, but a little bit of fluff is the fact that we have to define this um, vertex shader. It would be nice if we could just have pipelines just with a fragment shader, because if I'm doing this, I think a good default behavior is just fill the entire viewport. And so it'd be kind of nice if um, the rest of it was done automatically. Now, the issue is that because this, Again, because we're game in Kepler, we're aiming not to be an engine. We shouldn't be hiding too much data from you. We shouldn't be going and allocating things that you don't know about, having them hang around, and all these kind of stuff. So I've been, um, yeah, I've avoided doing that rather than just uh, creating um, a quad in memory in the background and just keeping it there. We have this helper function in Nineveh that will generate that stream for you, and we can use that. Um, but yeah, if we could do this in a completely stateless way, that would be really cool. And there is apparently a method with slightly... That's the what? Texture for up here. Um, a slightly less state. So apparently we can use an empty vertex array object in Keppel that's going to be streams. Um, a vertex stage which just has main in it, nothing else. Um, a geometry shader which emits a full screen quad. So we'll use the geometry shader to create a quad rather than passing it up. And damn, the white balance is crazy on that camera. Um, actually, one second. Fixed. Um, it's better for me as well. And then when we dispatch, we use draw arrays, which is fine. And we 
just tell it to draw one point. And even though there is nothing attached to this VAO, apparently it all just automatically works and we should get a quarter. So that's what we're going to try and prototype it in. Um, Keppel's not set up to do this properly now, so we'll probably be hacking a load of shit and just getting, getting something to work. That would be nice. So, first order of business, I suppose, is we need these two guys. In fact, let's just take this. And I went through the um, GL specifications when I wrote this issue back in September, so um, I'm pretty sure this should work for everything that supports GL Core, which for us is everything that Keppel supports. Let's shove this as our to-do list up here. So, um, let's bring up a REPL. Now we can make VAOs in, um, in Keppel. Have I? One second. It's been a while. How do we do VAOs in Keppel? I know we've got support for it because that's what's behind all the streams. Um, ah, let's just go digging. So this works. I just to actually make sure that we're getting hints as well. Yep, the mini buffer's got hints in it, so that thing must be running. Cool. So Keppel core, DAOs. Yeah, make the AO. it's there. So I wonder why didn't like that. Hmm. Let's have a think. Is it not in the package? Nope. Make VAO is that? Oh, maybe it's just uh, Keppel.VAOs isn't passed out in Keppel. So if we do Keppel.VAOs make VAO. Yeah. Come on, Chris. There we go. Invalid number of arguments. Yeah, it really isn't happy with that idea. Okay, so let's pass in no arrays. Nice. So yeah, it creates a VAO and that is just uh, the GLID. We don't wrap it up in anything in Keppel because we don't need to. Uh, we just leave it as. Most of the time we interface through this, like I said, through streams. So we can go and have a look at those. We do make buffer stream. If we just give it no GPU arrays, what happens? Oh yeah, it's gonna freak out and tell me that that's not valid. Interesting. And that's due to this. Um, okay. There's not much going on there. And then this is some, some asking about here. Okay, so one of the things Keppel tries to do is let you... Is, it's quite gentle if you haven't created a... Um, if you haven't started the GL context yet. Uh, if you try and make a GPU array or you try and, well, you try and do a bunch of that kind of stuff, make a VAO, all those, what it'll do is it will provide, it'll return an uninitialized buffer stream or an uninitialized GPU array. And then when the first GL context is created, it'll go through and initialize all those things that were um, uninitialized before. So it'll just go in through and initialize them then, which is nice because one of the things I kept doing was I would start Keppel, um, because I needed, I wanted to make something. And so I would start it up, make a GPU array, and then go, oh shit, I haven't started the context yet. Start the context, and then it would break. And so, like, I just made it a little more friendly. So, so some of this code is more complicated than it needs to be. Ah, now here is something. Make buffer stream for ID. That's interesting. And initialize buffer stream for ID. Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. There's nothing here. Um. Yeah, let's just see what happens if we just remove that protection. Okay, so do this. Oof. Okay, it still complains about that. Make buffer stream. Vi. Let's shrink this down a bit. Ah. 
going on over in chats. Ah. <laughs> oh, like Shimera's got the bot going again. Oh no. <laughs> Complaints from the mop. That's interesting. Um... Let's have a look down here. <laughs> oh, it's good to be back, even if I'm just kind of semi here. Let's, uh, let's have a look. So. Oh yeah, it's going to do the same thing here. So we get rid of that. Um, invalid number of arguments being passed to me. That's true. Um, Yeah, there we go. Length zero. Nice. Um, okay, so we've got some... Some BS. There we go. That's probably the most accurate thing for this right now. So we've got some buffer stream that apparently has nothing in it. And that's the first part of what we need, I believe. So let's go back to our code again. An empty VEO. Um, a vertex stage with just this code in it. Well, we've got a way to make um, inline GLSL, so that's probably going to be the easiest way to hack this in. Um, inline GLSL. Now, what I think is going to happen, though, is that it's going to freak out a bit with nothing being returned. Like, not um, not the GLSL compiler, but my compiler is going to freak out with the fact that there's no returns. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, let's just do this. Let's have no input arguments. And see what happens here. Good luck. Well, it hasn't complained yet. So let's try another as good luck as its first stage and then as its second stage we're gonna need well let's ha let's have a fragment hmm, what should we do here? For now we'll make another fragment shader that just does nothing. Except return red. Oops. Um, good luck, F. All the best names today. Right, execution of a form. Freaked out. Da da da. I could not find a GPU function called good luck vec2. That's true. It was just called good luck. So we compile this and again it hasn't freaked out yet now normally what happens is the first time that this pipeline is mapped over it's going to do the compiling and uploading and stuff like that um, what I'm going to do instead is it also creates a method called touch and then the name of the pipeline and it just lets you poke it and it will do the uploading and stuff then so if I do this it's complaining that Yeah, okay. So there is no applicable method for the generic function transform previous stage out data when called with nothing. Um, so that's a an issue in the Vario compiler. I kind of expected something like that. Hmm. Sure, I guess we go and have a, peek, a poke at that in a second. Nope, oh, we're under Microsoft in the chat already. Oh, I'll stay away from that. Right, let's see. So, previous stage out data is here. Oh, 
Well, that's weird. Transform previous stage out data being called with nil. Well, there's got to be a compiled. But even if that previous stage had no output data, um, it should still be a compiled stage itself. Splice in pre compiled stage. Yeah, what's that bullshit? I don't like that. Something funky going on here. Doesn't seem to think that. Oh, there we go. But this exists. Oh, wait a second, vertex. That's not going to be helping. That is a very unhelpful error. If that was, that's that's what it thought a good error was. Let's have a look. Okay, execution of a form compiled with errors. Blah blah blah. Um, inline GLSL vertex stages are not yet supported. Oh, I haven't done that yet. Bugger. That's crazy. You're right, I have, haven't done inline vertex shaders there. I thought I had in tessellation though. Like I had tessellation inline. No. Oh yeah, even says it there. Man, I've got to get back and do that at some point. I guess there were some horrible cases that just made it too annoying to implement at the time. Or maybe I was lazy. Hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to do it the proper way, which is annoying. I don't wanna do things the proper way. Let's take this and do, yeah, call this, good luck. V, and we're gonna return nothing. I think this is going to complain about empty, um, yeah, a progon with no body, because there's an implicit progon in here, so we can't have that. But we should be able to get away with values. So that will at least compile. But what happens if we try and, yeah, what, what, what is the, the code of this look like? If we do pull G, um, good luck, honey. We don't need this input either. Good luck, V. Ah, where did it get that shit from? I think that's, I think this is slightly spurious. One second. If I put one here and do this, yeah. So it, what happened is, it, oh, that's slightly ugly. Okay, so when you do pull G, um, with a GPU function on its own, it makes a little ver it makes a little vertex stage using that function in it. Um, but the thing was, I think the compiler realized that this didn't return anything, and so that there was no point in calling it, and it has no side effects. So it just stripped it from the code. So that's a bad way of seeing what's going on. Okay, so we'll just have to leave it. We'll things will break soon, and we'll we'll see. Um, good luck V, do nada, and let's do touch again. Oh, that didn't crash. Let's see what that turned into. Oh, sweet. Apparently, I've, <laughs> I actually set my compiler up so it would do this. Oh, cool. So we can have, we can have, uh, vertex stages with no inputs and no outputs, and it's fine with it. Sick. I don't remember doing that, but I'm very happy about it. Oh, that's easy. Okay, so vertex stage with just this. Yep. All good. A geometry shader that emits a full screen quad. Let's move some of this crap around. So I'm already getting myself confused. Uh, put this in some other file. Because we won't be needing this for much longer. So let's just dump it here. Oops. Oh, and uh, if someone wanted to follow along at home, I have pushed episode 22, the branch, um, to play with verts. Most of the code is stripped out because it's just this. We want to dick around with something very small. Okay. And let's go put this in foo as well. We don't need it for very long. 
This is what we need. Oh, I'm stoked that worked. So what happens if... No, if we map over this now, it's going to have problems. We do need to make the geometry shader first, because that's the bit that's going to give us the quad. So D fun G. Um, good luck G, apparently. And it takes nothing, and it's going to produce some data. So let's go to our couple examples again. And find an existing geometry shader. I know I've got a good one in... The uh, tessellation example. So let's just go there. Oops. Oh, come on, Chris. Learn to type. Hold it together. Right. Here's a little geometry shader. Let's steal this. Bam. Okay, so this emits a triangle, apparently. Um. Yeah. Cool. Let's do that. So we are going to be emitting six vertices because we're going to be doing two triangles. Um, we are going to be making triangle strip. Yes, I think that's the only thing that we can output here that makes sense. I can't remember. We'll have to have a look at that soon. It'll, it'll come together. Doesn't matter. Uh, get rid of this. Doesn't matter. We want to be emitting, so basically we emit a position and then some other data. And this will map onto the next one. So what I what I need in the fragment shader though it are the UVs. So we want to pass along UVs too. So we're going to do position UV, position UV. Okay, let's just get rid of these and we'll, we'll get this going soon. Okay, so we need to make a quad. So it starts off at, what is it? Minus one, one, um, and the UV is, what is it gonna be? Zero and one. Um, then the next one is going to be down, so it'll be, yeah, minus one, minus one. Next one will be, I'll fix up the UVs afterwards. Be at one, minus one. Cool. Now, with, with triangle strip and geometry shaders, do you just emit four vertices? Or do you emit all six? I think we need to then do something like this. So that'll be minus one, one, down to so the top left corner, down to bottom right corner, to top right corner. That should be correct. Um, but it's the strip thing here which makes me think that we might just need to omit four things and everything will be fine. I just can't remember with geometry shaders and the same we'll find out soon enough. So minus one minus one is zero zero. This is uh, yeah one zero. This is zero one. This is one zero and one one I think. Could be. Why not? Let's do that. And we do call this good luck G. Get rid of this one. And tell it we're going to have no arguments going in. Whoa. Didn't like something. Okay, currently, um, Vario cannot handle changing the type through. And. Assignment due to the static nature of GLSL. Fair enough. And the reason is all of these are vector twos and not vector fours. So we just need to, we need to put them in clip space. So we just do this. And we go down and put them here. And that compiles. Groovy. Um, let's do this. Okay, so now something's a little wrong. Oh, we're back to this complaint about not having error while passing arguments to nil, destructuring bind, blah, blah, blah. What have I done? Something's a little odd here. Um, that's going to take a deck two. Huh, still complaining. Oh, 
Oh, wait, okay. Um, oh, wait, I see, yes, of course. So if we only have two uh, GPU functions in the pipeline up till now, it had to be vertex and fragment shader. As soon as we add a third one, this could be geometry, this could be tessellation related, uh, we don't know. So now we have to actually give it the information. So it's a vertex stage, it's a geometry stage, it's a fragment stage. Yep, and now it's not complaining. Good. And we'll do pull G, nada, uh, doesn't like it yet. And that's fine. We'll do touch and pull G. And now we've got a load of code. Cool. So we have a vertex stage where nothing happens. We have um, a geometry stage that takes triangles and puts out triangles. Um, and not, it puts out triangles and each one has a vector two. We go through, we set the GL position and the output data, and then we emit, we emit, we emit, we emit, we emit. And then we emit, so we keep doing that six times, then we emit the primitive. Wait, no, that can't just be one emit primitive. It has to be this, end primitive. I think that's right. Is that correct? Can't remember. And then the last stage um, is just emitting the color red. We'll see. We'll see. Right. Damn, Shin. Get some warm clothes on, man. Jace, with the triangle strip, you only do four. Cool. Um, then I will go and sort this out. Yeah, because I knew with triangle strips you only do four when you're supplying it as the, um, like a, um, oh, come on, Chris, the vertex data in a stream. Then it's just four. Uh, but the geometry shader, wait a second, why am I just mumbling to myself about this? We've got fucking documentation right here. Geometry shader. And the interesting point is that with... Yeah, and I forget that. This is the details coming back into my head from transform feedback. Okay, these work exactly the way, the same way as their counterparts do in rent. Oh, counterpart OpenGL rendering modes do. To help put individual triangles or lines, simply use the end primitive after it emitting each set of three or two vertices. Interesting. Each set of three or two, but it doesn't say one because otherwise it would be. Just this, wouldn't it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Right, let's start breaking this. Anyway, we stop using simple. Um, we can start calling nada. And I'm surprised that still. Oh no, it's not running. Oh well, we're getting we're getting full screen red. That's a great start. Wow, I didn't expect that. If I put this down to 0.5, do we see the difference? We do. Oh, cool. Now, of course, we're passing in far too much data here, but that's all right. Let's go and look for that um, variable we defined earlier. Yes, it was our BS variable, of course. Um, if we take this and just shove it in here, what happens? Ah, fuck. <laughs> it doesn't work. Okay, so we are getting close. Um, and this is it. So we meant to call draw arrays, and then we say we're going to draw points, and then we just say zero, 01. Okay, that's interesting. So, got to remember how I do this. Um, so when we make that, let's set FBS again. Um, we do make. Come on, how did we do it earlier? Oh, it was just make buffer stream now. Cool. But along with this, I want to say primitive points. Bam. Okay, the buffer stream passed to Nada. It contains points. However, Nada was expecting triangles. Uh, you can either change the type of the primitives um, the pipeline was expecting, which is exactly what we want to do. So we'll do that. And then ignore the other stuff. 
or create a stream with the correct thing. That's fine. No, we're going to go down here and save points. And it still doesn't look like it's doing anything, right? So if we... What we should do, actually, is have simple here. And... Oh, no, it's not some sample. What was it? Um, get quad yada yada stuff. There we go. Cool. So it's still working. But this is just not right yet. And so this means whatever map G, uh, whatever this and this macro are doing are incorrect for our little hack. We want something like this. I want to find out what GL draw arrays takes. I don't think uh, CL Open GL has documentation attached. That would be a massive task. It would be very cool though. It might be something to do one day. God, that would be such a bitch of a project. Anyway. So GL draw arrays. Let's go have a look. GL draw arrays. Okay, we specify mode, we specify the starting index in the enabled arrays, and we specify a count. Um, so I'm expecting the count is being set to zero because our stream is empty. So let's go have a look. The first thing what we're going to have to do is just go and <laughs> expand this macro, which is the hairiest fucking macro um, in Cattle. It's a monster. And more than this, I'm actually going to have to, because it, it uses, uh, what are they called, load forms and stuff like this in here, I can't interactively expand this block because it will complain that it doesn't know how to read these, which makes some degree of sense. But it's a bummer. So what I need to do instead is go back to that code and say um, slime macro expand all. And this is going to make it horrendous because it's going to expand all the defunds and all that kind of stuff as well. But further down here, there will be the code that actually does the rendering. It is draw arrays. Here we are. So, when does draw arrays get called? So the first part is if there's instancing, we're going to call this. And if not, we're going to call this. That's fine. And then it says if there's an index type, um, we're going to use this one. Otherwise, we're going to use this. So this gets us down to draw arrays. So as long as our um, buffer stream isn't indexed, we're going to hit this code, which is perfect. And here we are. We can see the draw mode is going to be taken from the stream, which is fine. It's going to be points. The buffer stream start, I'm sure, will be zero. And we can go and have a look at that in a second. Um, we're, we're interested in this bit. Let's um, inspect our BS variable. Okay, yes, our start is zero and our length is zero. So that's the problem. If we could say that the length was one, um, then we'd be fine. So maybe that's what we do. Maybe we just say if, um, if you create a buffer stream with no GPU arrays, it just sets the length to one. Let's see what happens. So let's go back to our code. Um, make buffer stream, jump there. We go further down where we fiddled with this before. Where was it? Min zero. Here we go. Min length is if um, GPU arrays, it's zero, otherwise it's one. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is I'm not sure if you provide something and it has zero length, I kind of want it to use zero length. If you provide no GPU arrays, that's a very special kind of behavior you're going for. Streaming from nothing. Um, and so then we're going to put min length here. Compile this. Go back to here. Make our buffer stream again. Yep, set BS to be... Oh yeah, we need this, don't we? Set BS to be that. Hey, hey, 
And it works. Okay. Cool. So. And my apologies, I know someone the other week said, hey, when you're typing things in the REPL, please don't immediately clear the REPL, because it makes it really hard to read what's going on. I know I'm still doing that, I'm sorry. Keep bugging me, I will try and get better. <laughs> um, let's jump over to this. Okay, so this is working now. Which means we can change this to be texture, uh, sampler at UVs, and we're back to our lulva. Cool. So this was what we were going for, which is um, we, we're we rendering a full screen quad without having to provide the data for the quad. And that's cool because we don't have to have, we don't, we don't need to create that data. We don't have to have that state lurking around. Um, but the downside is we need this empty stream, um, which is, again, is another kind of state. And, and what's interesting is, okay, so... One of the things I've started doing in the last week is um, is really trying to get multi-context support um, added to Keppel. And that has a lot of implications. Um, the main one is, okay, so there are there are GL contexts, and a GL context can only be current, can like say like bound, on a single thread at a time. You can unbind it again and then rebind it on another thread. But again, the general like the general pattern is you have like um, one one context on a thread. Swapping out uh, contexts using make current is very slow. Um, all kinds of flushing and thing occur, so it's not something you want to do very often in your like per frame. But one of the great things about having multiple contexts is spinning up, um, is creating, well, you can either render, say, two windows completely in parallel, and they can be rendering totally different things with different state and all that. Or you can create shared context. And these ones share the GPU data that is not a container. So streams are not shared. FBOs are not shared. Anything that holds other, um, like VAOs, holds references to other GL objects. So like, yeah, that kind of thing. Those ones aren't shared, but textures and GPU arrays and things like this, the big heavy stuff, the big chunks of data, those are shared between the contexts and you can use them from both threads. Now, you need to then use things like memory fences and all this kind of stuff to protect yourself so you're not using the same resources at the same time or like modifying a resource that someone else is writing to. But the really valuable thing is being able to kick off a second thread and then using something like pixel buffer objects to upload a load of data while your first thread is rendering. And because they're shared, once the upload's finished, it's available to the first thread. So this is one of the things where you want, if you want to have like um, transparent level loading um, as your character's making way through the game, you realize you're about to come to the end of a section. Then in the background, you can start uploading all the data for the next section. And then again, you just drop out the stuff you don't need anymore. It's again, it's a solid technique. And when done right, can again, save you a lot of time. And so I want to be able to support that. But yeah, yeah, shared contexts are messy. The other thing, like I just said, not all the state is shared. One of the things that aren't shared are streams. So we have this empty stream that we're um, we're dealing with here. We're going to have to have one of those for each context. Uh, and it's kind of weird. This is where we're going to have to start being, again, API designers and deciding are the costs of doing this in the background higher than the value it's providing. So let me, let me, before I carry on with this kind of stuff, let's just look through what's going on in the chat. So Jason says, a single primitive triangle strip has four points, with four points has the same effect as two triangle strip primitives, each with three points. Yes, yes. Okay, so I should have been able to do one primitive with four points. Oh, we can test it, can't we? Let's, we got this live coding shit over here. Um, if we do this, I guess. It didn't like that. Didn't like that at all. What have I done wrong? I thought you only had to provide the... No, otherwise, if 
I provide any more, then we're back in the same situation as we were. I'm a bit confused, sir. Might need some help from that one. My brain's gone. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, that macro is a... Uh... <laughs> it a bit... looks like a bag of stock string. I'm both insulted and, and delighted with that comment. Thank you very much. Yes, I, we've got some we've got some big ass dog strings in Keppel, and I'm super proud of it. Um, yeah, the macro is mental. It, ha it has to cover a load of cases and and threading and all these other things. This is uh, again over the last um, week I've added support, so it's kind of tricky. Okay, I'll go, I'll go go on a ramble about this because why not? So we create a pipeline, which now essentially means there's a function that when it gets called is going to dispatch some stuff to the GPU. But the um, GL programs, that's like the compiled shaders, they, those are shared between contexts. But the problem is if two threads start calling the same uh, pipeline at the same time, one of the things they're gonna want to do is provide uniforms. So they're both gonna be modifying that shared uniform state which means they're gonna be trampling on each other and you've got all kinds of data races. So what you need is whether or not your contexts are shared, you want separate program objects per thread. And so this thing also handles that for you. Um, and it does it by the fact that each, um, again, a Keppel context, which kind of wraps the GL context, can only exist on one thread. It's completely bound to the thread. And it's passed implicitly just as a um, special variable. So it, it, like the um, the context is passed into here and on the context, um, sorry, no, the context has an ID which is used to look up into the pipelines program ID table. And yeah, it's done in a way that should be fast enough. But this, this fucking macro man is enormous. Um, and it has to handle another couple of cases as well. Something that I haven't actually shown on stream before which is that you can make pipelines using GPU functions that take GPU functions as arguments. So you have higher order pipelines. And that means that before you use them, they have to be completed. So um, what you have to do is you take the GPU function, you, you can create this pipeline. It's kind of like, then becomes like a, um, a pipeline factory. And you can just pass in a new GPU function as the argument and it will create a new Lambda pipeline. Um, that you can then use. That's It's actually really hard to explain just with words. I'll have to give a demonstration sometime to show it works. But those are the partial and complete pipelines. But the, even the complete pipeline has a load of stuff. Because there's just... It's one big top-level closure. Um, which has... Again, closes over program IDs and... Um, information about uniforms and what else a bunch of stuff like there's the dispatch function which is down here somewhere i just was hovering near it wait a second dispatch here we go yeah Where's the important bit? Oh yeah, down here. This is the this is the meat of a pipeline between here and here. Um, and again, because because we're in a macro, we can just type as much as we like. So it, it tries to it tries to put type information and set speed high wherever it can. Um, you've also got things in here for uh, profiling and stuff like this. So it becomes fairly messy. Um, but the main point is that when when this comes in. Um, it looks for its program ID based on the current context ID. So the, your program ID for this thread. If it can't find it, if it's an unknown GL ID, then it's going to call the initialized function um, and it's then going to set its local program ID. Like, So it sets that up. If it can't provide it, then it has to return and there's some other stuff that happens. Then you have the use program, which is the normal GL command. Um, well, no, it's not, it's not the normal GL command actually because use program um, caches the program ID on your context so that if you 
call the same pipeline many times in a row, it doesn't have to unbind, rebind, unbind, rebind, like use, unuse, use, unuse all the time because those state changes are costly. So by caching the information on the context, we can avoid state changes. That makes, it makes your, your GL code significantly faster if you can avoid any state changes. Um, this block is where all the uniform uploading is done. That is a whole beast on its own. Um, and then there's the drawer expander. This is a macro that does the stuff we were just looking at, which was, yeah, cares about whether things are being instanced or not, cares about whether they're being drawn with indexes, all this stuff that's in different parts of the front line. It's, it's a fucking mess. It's, the, it's, it's, it's probably the worst macro in Keppel, but it also does loads of stuff and does it well. As you can see here, we don't ever unbind the um, program that you're using, which is really valuable. Um, you get measurable speed increases by not unbinding the program, but being careful about it. You know? uh, and then there's cleanup and all this other stuff. Anyway, yeah, I don't know why I'm going off on that. It's uh, There's stuff there. Anyway, so... Um, oh yeah, that's what I was going off on about, because it was mentioned in the chats. Um, NGBN was saying a French dude on Discord kept bugging me about needing help on a forum, but I don't know French. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> um, Homdefim saying only static memory maps are shared. Um, how do you mean by that, mate? And Jay's saying, did you see the issue I raised on Vario? Maybe. I don't know. I've, I've been, like, the, the last few weeks, I'm not sure what it is. I mean, other than obviously being ill. Um, a mixed reality startup from Helsinki. Awesome, I should go over there and see him someday. That'd be awesome. Um... Jace. Oh yes, the uh, GS block causes non-intuitive type checking error. Oh, is this the one from the? Is this the one we just saw? Mit in a GS at the end of a block causes very unusual. Yeah, sorry. Basically, sorry. I haven't looked at this yet. I've I've been I've just been kind of out of it the last few weeks. I've, I I don't know what it is. I haven't felt burnt out, so I'm not sure what's going on, but. That's what I was saying. It's uh, November now. So uh, my partner and I kind of do uh, NaNoWriMo. So he's writing, but um, I just tend to pick a few features from projects I'm working on and just like, right, that's what I'm going to do this month. I'm going to hammer those out. So this month's goals are multiple contexts being properly implemented in Keppel and potentially this uh, single stage, um, yeah, single stage pipelines but we'll see there's still some trade-offs to do there so let's let's look at that <laughs> no i didn't see the issue or i did and i forgot i don't know i don't know things are happening i need more coffee actually i do need more coffee let's just finish this off Ah, oh, dear. So many bugs to fix. Quite a few of them from the stream, actually. Um, oh, discard's going to be interesting as well. I have a feeling there's going to be implications to that. I need to go and do some reading. Okay, so, where are we? Yes, okay, so caught up the chat. Considering going and grabbing another coffee in a minute. I'm going to hold off for a few... Let's have a think about this then. So it would kind of be cool. So the goal is that someone could write this and Keppel will then create, will you will just use um, a pre-created geometry and vertex shader that we're just going to shove in Keppel. Um, yeah, man, that would be kind of cool if it did that. 
But then you have to pass in this um, empty stream. Maybe that's all right. Maybe that's okay. Maybe you just have to tell people, hey, you're passing an empty stream at that point. Um, maybe that's not a big deal. I kind of like the idea of it producing a vertex and geometry shader for you. <sighs> what are the downsides? The downsides, obviously, are when you pull the pipeline, you're only going to expect to see your fragment shader in there, and there's all this other stuff. And the fact that there's a geometry shader in there is going to be kind of confusing. Um, but what we can do is we could say, we could just document it. We can just say that, hey, look, um, normally GL doesn't let you just provide a fragment shader. Keppel wants to help you out, so it does this. Don't be surprised if you see this when you do pull. That would be all right. Uh, what I mean is, like, when we do, where is it? This. Like, if you wrote this bit, this bit is going to come as a surprise. Um, but that might, I, I think that's a pretty easy thing to teach. So maybe it's not a big deal. But these are the trade-offs. Again, it's like the whole don't make it too like an engine thing. Don't don't like hide too much knowledge away. Don't make things too intractable to, to understand. Hmm. Kind of like this idea though. So let's say we move this into Kevl. Kevl for pipelines. Um, quad stages, I guess. And we'll go here. Can we do this yet? Maybe it's too early in the... No, no, we'll be fine. It'll be fine. Let's do it in couple. Couple to ASD. Excuse me. And we can put it fairly late. It really doesn't matter. What's the last pipelines thing? Map G here. Let's do it here. Uh, quad stages. So we'll call it stateless quad vertex stage. Stateless quad joms the tree stage. Yeah, give it a proper name. Bam, bam. Oh, freaked out. What isn't it like? Held of Vario, decal type equals output primitive. What? What, 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 what? This is to do with. Yeah, I think. Oh, the fuck? This is to do with symbols and what is available. So, Vario is not imported in this stage, I guess. Sorry, and, man, my brain is just not. Giving me the words I need right now. Okay, in this package, uh, Vario is not used. So we're going to have to stick Vario in front of a load of things for it to be happy. I think. I think that's it. Um, let's go and look at Vario package. Um, output. Primitive. Yeah, these are all part of Vari CL, which is part of Vari. So we should be able to just do Vari. And we'll just put a good chunk of these through here. Not a big deal. And then this is going to have to be Three, which is part of Vari.glsl. That's fine. So again, also part of Vari, so that's okay. Um, we can say Vari dot oops, no, Vari vec four. The GLSL will be exactly the same, and most people aren't going to be reading this. Well, almost no one will be reading this, except the, us maintainers, anyway. 
a second. Okay. How about that? Yes, okay, so that compiles. So now we've got two stages available. So let's go back to play with play with list, play with verts, I mean. Get rid of these two. So now it will be Keppel.pipelines um, stateless quad vertex stage. Oh, let's do this. Stateless quad geometry stage. Recompile and everything's fine. Good, so the amount of code's going down. Now we need it so that we don't have to provide this ourselves. If we just provide a fragment, we'll get something sensible. So we go to def pipeline and we go have a look. So one of the first things it does is pass the gpipe args. So, um, Implicit, we're going to be doing explicit. Okay. Now, this is some stupid looking code. Awesome. Doesn't matter. Let's just go with it. Right. So, um, when Length of result is one, and the power of the result um, is equal to fragment. So that's saying there's only a fragment stage specified, and it's been specified explicitly. Then um, we can set off the result be append result to nope. something like this. So how are they done it? It's cons together, so it's gonna be this. Let's just see what happens if we do this. And then return the result. Whoops. Actually, yeah, when we're, oh no, put the, when we get into the when, we, we're gonna break, go whoo, and pass in the result. Cool. Reverts. Now we should be able to remove these and we compile this and it freaks out. <laughs> there are not enough functions here to be a valid pipeline. Well, it's very sensible. But how? Who caught that? Where did that error come from? Because that's a very good error. But I don't know where. Um, let's, if we try and expand it, it should be easier. Assert valid gpipe form. Well, that's nice. Who calls that? Def pipeline G. Oh, and it does it before even passing anything as well. Okay. So we need to have an extra possible case in here as well. Um, What do we do? What's this without keys thing? We just... Oh yeah, we strip some things out. And then...
We can come back to that later. Oh, here we go. Nice. Right, so... Okay, so this is wrong. So what we need to do is say, okay, there's a fragment and it's consed with this GPU function object. So we need to go and do something similar to that. And then, right, okay. So abort, that's fine. Let's go back to wherever we were. Where were we? I don't know. Um, is this pass, pass GPI box. And explicit, and let's have a look. Okay, it's this case. Interested again by that. I need to go and look at the um, the error we just had because I'm confused again. Okay, so it was a GPU function object. How do we get those? I can't remember. <laughs> um, cool. Oh, it's a function key. All right, so yeah, then we should be able to get that fairly easily. Um, let's do list, let's do cons. What did I do there? Cons. And then there's going to be a function for looking this stuff up. Let's just try this. Do get stage key. Maybe that was it. And package kettle dots pipelines. Again, like I said, one of these days where it's just not data, not information that's going to be transferable to uh, <laughs> to other people really. But we're going to hack this in. It'll be fine. Get stage key. Play with verse. Okay, so now we've got... Oh, this is in the wrong order as well. But yeah, we have three um, stages. Vertex, geometry, fragment. Each with their GPU function information objects. So that's a that bodes well. Um, the order's wrong, so when I did that append, we can just swap these two forms around, recompile it. I'm gonna get rid of that break because I'm hoping it's gonna work now. And yes, that's it. Okay, so that was. So now we've added single, again, single stage pipelines, like for, well, for, at least at least for fragment shaders, we've added that to Capital. So this is a prototype of this feature. Um, yeah, okay, right, like, let's get back to the stream and try and be a uh, human being again. Let's have a look. Da -da -da -da. Uh, Phil Fogg, so what's the plan today? Yes, sorry. Okay, so the idea was to... I, I want, Basically, I, I wanted to do some development on Keppel. And um, it's not something I've tried streaming before, because as we're already seeing, it's pretty it's pretty messy to move through, and it's not, it's not the easiest thing to explain what I'm doing every step of the way. Uh, but I'm trying to hack in a feature, and then we can evaluate it to see whether it's something we want in Keppel to actually, like, ship. And so the idea was um, that, you know, making um, making pipelines is nice, but if we're doing these full um, screen or full viewport more accurately, if we're doing these full viewport kind of um, 
renders where we just we want to run a, f a fragment shader on every um, texel in the viewport then texel sorry again incorrect terminology fragment every fragment in the viewport um, it would be nice if we could just specify the fragment shader and not care about the vertex shader um, and not care about providing um, a buffer stream with quad data like those are things that we just have to do because GL needs that information but we're not sure if it's like maybe just being able just just doing this is going to be nicer maybe like not having that cruft around is more pleasant and so the idea was to sketch out this idea and um yeah see what the result looked like and that's what we've done we've um the first thing we did was again implement um a vertex and geometry shader that create the quad for you without you having to upload any data and then we again tweaked a couple of things in Keppel to make sure that you could create essentially a VAO with nothing in it. Um, so this is now all done, so that goes away. So this is now the minimal, um, this is the smallest valid Keppel program for running a fragment shader, I expect. Like there's not much code here, but we get a lot done. And um, like this is the bit we were really interested in and it now you know by code weight it is it is now a more significant part of this code than it was before like we had a, we had more cruft just to do this than we do now so maybe this is a feature we want to keep um one of the things that, so we've made something slightly easier to do but we've added a small piece of cognitive weight which is it's not exactly like GL and that you have to create this empty um, buffer stream if you want to do this. So if you're only, this is just another rule for people to learn, right? If you're making a pipeline which only has a fragment stage, then you're going to need to make a stream with no attachments, with no data. Like how hard is that to teach? Does it flow well with the rest of the stuff we're teaching? I'm not sure, but um this is exactly what I wanted to, this is exactly what we're trying to make. This is how we design Keppel. And, and it's also why Keppel's taken a very long time to make because it's just sitting down having these grumbly arguments with, with myself rather than doing it on stream. Um, yeah, single stage pipelines. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where we are. And we've kind of done it. So the next step would be Okay, so we have single fragment stages. I guess there's a, there's a couple of things we need to do here. Um, we need to commit. <laughs> um, did we make any changes in Vario? No. Uh, we can go to Keppel. And we're gonna create a new branch starting at master and it's feature and it's single um, Single stage pipelines. Yep, and we'll do this. Um, single fragment stage pipeline. And should we take the time to write a decent commit message? I'm going to be revisiting this anyway, I think, but um, a couple of notes. Um, when you create a buffer stream with no GPU arrays, in fact, I definitely will be coming back to rebase this commit um, because we've got commented out code and we don't commit comments. <laughs> we don't commit commented out code. If you're going to remove code, remove it because it should already be committed in your history. Um, yeah. Okay. When we, with no GPU arrays. It now has a length of one. So yeah, I won't worry too much about the pipeline message yet. Let's push this branch up to origin. And cool, that's a work in progress feature. So that's that. Kind of nice. We're at 22 lines of code and we've got a full... OpenGL pipeline and 
all that kind of stuff. We're doing something non-trivial. Um, that's cool. I'm happy with that. So, the question is, hey, we've got single fragment stage pipelines. Um, what does it mean to have a single vertex stage pipeline? Let's uh, do this. Because this could be kind of cool. So what would happen here is rather than writing into an FBO, um, you're going to write into a, what do they call it? Transform feedback buffer. And that's something we're going to have to do some research into. But the idea is then you read in from one GPU array and you're writing into another GPU array. So you can, what you're essentially turning then, you're turning this pipeline into, is, is, is map. You're mapping over a GPU array. Like, yeah, you're, do, you're doing map on the GPU and it's in parallel and all this kind of stuff. That's potentially really cool. Um, so I want to have a look into that. And it just so happens I have transform feedback buffer here. So what I'm going to do is see what's going on in chat one more time. I'm going to go grab a coffee. Um, because otherwise I'm not going to make it to the 10. And then going to have a start having a look here and see if we can find patterns um, provided by OpenGL that it makes sense for us to put in Keppel, try and find Lispy analogies for all these things. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do next. <laughs> Thanks, Phil Fogg. <laughs> oh, amazing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> on that wonderful note, um, let's pause. All right, we're back. Let's jump over here, back on the right machine. Um, and we can start pondering about stuff. <laughs> cool. So. Transform feedback is kind of interesting. Let's see if um have I got my have I got anything set up properly today? Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So when we make a pipeline, we have like something like a vertex, maybe we have tessellation evaluation. Um, what the? Have I just mind, have I gone blank on the different kinds of tessellation shader? I think I have. One second. I can't go on without knowing this tessellation control and tessellation evaluation. That was it. Cool. Never mind. Okay, so it's tessellation control. 
tessellation evaluation, um, geometry shaders, fragment shaders. And this is how our data flows through with some, obviously with fixed function uh, stages in there as well. Now, from the FBOs, oh sorry, from the FBOs, ah, brain, from the fragment shaders, um, we write out to an FBO. Um, and all the default FBO, which is a window screen, whatever. Um, but transform feedback allows you to provide another buffer, or transform feedback buffer, and it is you can write to it from the last active vertex stage. So all of these guys are vertex stages. Uh, I'll see it's the fragment stages. Um, so the last active one. So in, in this pipeline, it would be the geometry shader is able to write out to the transform feedback buffer. If we don't have um, all these guys, maybe we only have a vertex shader, we could write from there. So this provides us with some really interesting possibilities. Obviously like for, for creating for this case, it's really interesting because we can take data, pump it through this pipeline and then write it out to another GPU array. So we can start doing more interesting processing, data processing on the GPU. So for example, maybe you wanted to have, a, again, maybe you wanted um, to store your um, particle data in a buffer. And then you want to map over that particle, that GPU array, and update all the positions and other details of your particles. Um, the way I've done that before on the GPU is to store all the data packed into textures, but it's a bit fiddly, um, and it hasn't. It's not as flexible as far as length goes and things like this. It would be much nicer just to map over it in vertex stages. So this would be really cool. Um, the other possibility, and this is one that I'm, I need for a future feature, is that if we have, um, if we have a pipeline with a vertex and a fragment stage, and we were to write, say, um, log or print or something like that inside, um, our, sorry, in, inside our GPU function. And then when the, whenever you hit print in your vertex shader, it would write out to a transform feedback buffer. Then we get to do um, debugging of our GPU code. We get print statements for the GPU. Um, it just means at the end of the pass, we would dump all this information from the transform feedback buffer out. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing it quite literally in that way um, because again you're gonna you're gonna render like a model with a million triangles and then if you do put a print statement in there that's a million print statements that are just gonna come out every 60th of a second um, so we're gonna have to have a smarter way of dealing with that but the idea is because everything inside here is essentially magic we don't have to just generate one program we can generate five programs we can generate a program that actually does the visual output. And we can generate another number of other programs that just do stuff related to debugging. So we can run the pipeline and just do the vertex stage and write the results into transform feedback. We could run doing vertex and um, tessellation control and write the values out from the tessellation control or tessellation evaluation geometry. We could run these four things, like we could run all five stages in debug mode and then do a real render and it's completely fine and we can do this transparently and I'm really excited about that because it would make it would make some of the debugging that we do so much easier and one of the other things I'm really really interested in doing is to be able to run um, GPU functions from the REPL so it's Let's just, how do we turn this off for a second? I can't remember. Oh, we'll just get rid of it. Where is it? Um, there we go. Let me bring up the REPL. So right now, if you call, say, 
Oh no, wait, let's get back in the right in the right package. If we call good luck F. Like this. Um, it's going to just give you a warning. GPU functions cannot currently be called from the CPU. But what if, at the point that you call them like that, it, temp it creates a temporary pipeline. Um, it, it, um, with this as the fragment, as, as the vertex shader, um, it runs exactly, it runs it exactly once on the GPU, capturing all the output um, to transform feedback or to an FBO, and then printed that result at the REPL. It would mean that you could call things on the GPU just like any other function. Now, you wouldn't want to use that in your actual game because it would be tremendously slow. But for actually for debugging and for developing these things, it could be awesome. Because the other, the other way of doing it is to try, is to compile this into regular Lisp code. And that's a fool's endeavor in the end. I've, I'd spend some time thinking about it and it just seems hellish because you're never going to be able to capture even if you did a great job, let's say that you you managed to emulate um, like the behavior perfectly for textures and all that kind of stuff, it would would still wouldn't capture some of the bugs you're interested in because some of the some of the things that you encounter are device specific bugs. It's like oh this this is just how Nvidia have chosen to implement this and it isn't according to the spec but they think it's better so they do it. Um, you can see points for that kind of stuff. So by actually running it on the GPU, we get real values. You can see exactly what you're going to get. I don't know. It just it seems really exciting to be able to just run these functions as is. Um, yeah, Barrett's saying I can has GPU watch points. That's exactly what I want to do. I, 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 I really want to capture that kind of stuff and then provide some way of skimming over that data. But I love the idea of just being able to call this and just, you know, Sam, um, with some sampler. Like, this should just work. That would be so cool. But we need, we, we need some more mechanisms first. Um, and we would also need to be able to say, like, because a GPU function and here doesn't know whether it's a vertex or a fragment. Um, like, it, it doesn't know what it's going to be used for. It might be a vertex stage. It might be a fragment stage. It might be just a helper method to another stage. It really doesn't know. So we would have to maybe do as fragment or something. I, I have no idea. Um, something like this. Or maybe the first argument is what you provide. Fragment. Vertex. That could be cool. I don't know. It seems promising, though. So I really want to do something there. Um, yeah, or a shader that filters interesting frames to log. Yeah, it could do. I mean, I, I don't see... None of that seems fundamentally impossible. So that's cool. So yeah, this seems important, <laughs> I guess is the short version. Actually, it's kind of interesting because if it was... Um, hmm... Just trying to think about this now. Yeah, but let's just look at transform feedback and see what we can find out. So it's the um, how are you all doing, by the way, guys? Like, uh, how's it going over in Chatland? Yell out if there's any questions or if I'm just rambling or whatever you need. Yell it out, and uh, we will see what we can do. Okay, so transform feedback is the process of capturing primitives generated by the vertex processing steps. Um, recording data from those primitives into buffer objects. This allows one to preserve the post-transform rendering state of an object and resubmit the data multiple times. Yeah, that's super cool. You could also use this for like, uh, if you're doing GPU skinning, um, you could reposition, you're going to have do one pass where you move all the vertices based on your bones and then you have all that data in a buffer and then you can do a bunch of rendering without having to recompute that stuff each time. Rambling for the win. More sound effects. Yeah, that's all this needs is a soundboard. Um, yeah. This is interesting. 
So in order to capture primitives, the program containing the final vertex processing shader must be linked with a number of parameters. Yes. Ah, oh, okay. So wait a second. The program contain the program containing um, must be linked with a number of parameters. That's fine. Yes. And all of this stuff is going to be done hidden away by our massive magic macro. So uh, that's cool. These parameters must be set before linking the program, not after. So if you want to use GL create shader program, yeah, you have to do that other stuff. Don't care about that. That's uh, like it says a 4.4 thing. And we have nicer ways of doing that anyway. The only program object that matters for translation feedback is the one that provides the last vertex processing stage. Sure. Can operate in two capturing modes. Okay, this is important. In interleaved mode, all captured outputs go to the same buffer, interleaved with one another. In a separate mode, they each go to a separate buffer. Cool, that makes sense. Um, Separate capturing mode does not necessarily mean that the captures go into different buffer objects. It means that they are captured into separate buffer binding points. And that's good. So basically, to us, um, that means that it's always writing into either one, interleaved into one GPU array, or separate into many GPU arrays. Because the GPU arrays will abstract these binding points. Um, so we can create multiple GPU arrays that exist within the same buffer object. And then writing into that using transform feedback would just write into those separate chunks. That'll be fine. Um, to define the capture settings for the program, as well as which output variables are captured, use the following function, this guy. Cool. So we just need to call this before link program. That's cool. I, I can't remember where exactly we call link program. I mean, it's going to be in this dev pipeline stuff somewhere. Okay, there's a function called link shaders. And it takes in some, yeah, it takes in some code. And yeah, links program. Checks for errors and detaches some shaders. Oh, that's great. That's no problem there then. And that's called from compile link and upload. Yes. Which is meaty, but otherwise fine. It's not too dramatic in here. Um, capturing compile results and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, this is fine. All right. Um, So we need a way to indicate to, we need a way in Keppel of expressing that we want something to be captured by transform feedback. And it's a compile time thing. So there's a couple of ways of doing it, aren't there? Like, I mean, so if we go back to play with verts, and let's just make up some function. So defund g, um, Actually, no, let's just go to our foo file. We put some code in here. So at the moment, when you return stuff from a vertex stage, um, you can return it as is, or you can also specify some extra parameters, like smooth. Um, we'll then like we'll add that qualifier on the outputs and inputs of the next stage. Um, we could also have uh, feedback. You know, and then we just we just say, okay, these binding points are going to be the ones we want to do transform feedback on. Um, it will require us to capture this information in Vario, so we'll have to work out how to do that. We can we can we can find out. So let's do Vario um, make stage kind is a vertex stage. Its in arguments are nil. Its uniforms are nil. Its context is 450, its code is um, just this for now. One, two, three, four. Um, and we're going to call Vario, or is it translate? I think. Yeah. And that compiles. 
files, and then we can say Vario GLSL code. So this is us not using Keppel, we're just using Vario directly to see what we can do. Um, and so we say something like values and nothing changes, or we can say values smooth. And so that doesn't affect, smooth doesn't affect GL position. So it's relevant when we're returning multiple values. So if we do, um, now we're returning multiple things. The first one is being uh, used as GL position. And the second one is being put in this output block. So now if we go back here and say smooth on this, we can see the smooth qualifier has been added, whoops, here. Um, and if we have more stages, then yeah, it's gonna use them there as well. So what happens if we put feedback? Now at the moment, it's gonna just dump that into here because it's not very smart. Um, but what we could do instead is just have this information stored like in the compile output. Let's have a look actually. Like if we, if we don't just grab the GLSL code and we look at the compiled stage, let's see what we've got in here. So we have output variables. We have two of them, which makes sense. The first one is going to be uh, the vector four, and this is going to be our GL um, position. The next one, as we can see, has a list of qualifiers and feedback is in there. So what we need to do is we need to improve the compiler so it actually looks for valid qualifiers to use in its outputs and filters those. And the rest of them, it just leaves in the qualifiers list. That means then in Keppel, we can query this information at compile time. And from that, we should be able to do the things that, um, well, we can make this call. You know, we can generate the, these calls that we're going to need to set up the uh, transform feedback. And the good news about that is it means that, yes, this is what it's going to look like to do transform feedback. I think that's pretty simple. Um, I think that like for a fairly advanced OpenGL feature, being able to just write this keyword and have it work is pretty cool. Um, the interesting bit though for me right now is that um, our analogies are, this, this affects our analogies. So we say we're going to map over simple with some stream. It doesn't matter what it is. And we're passing in um, some sampler. That's cool. Actually, let's just, for the sake of argument, let's just use a proper stream. Okay. So this is how we map over our pipeline. And the, res the return value of this is the FBO that we wrote into. Um, so it will be like, in, in the usual case, like if, if uh, let me bring up the other page quickly. Let's get play with Burt's and bring up the REPL as well. If we go here, whoops, we go here and we say print after map G, we can say the default FBO is there. Um, now, when we want to capture the output um, from rendering, we say with FBO bound, and then we provide some FBO, and we wrap that around the map G. And this allows us to capture the output. And it's a lispy um, construct because it takes its inspiration from um, with, there's a, there's a string related with output to string. Um, yeah, I just liked this idea that you could, or like you could set, yeah, you can, you could set standard out to be captured into a string, for example. And it was, it was kind of nice that you could just wrap a form in another form and you'll get this kind of kind of fairly intuitive behavior. But the problem is, where do we put our transform feedback buffer? Um, there's another way of writing this as well in Keppel. It's, it's just macro shorthand. 
you can say um, map g into and put some FDO here. Right, this this is exactly the same. Um, this is nice when you only want to write into, you have one pass writing into one FBO. But sometimes you have two passes. So it'll be um, first pass and second pass. Uh, because maybe, again, two different material types in your game objects would be rendered on two different passes, but you want them both to end up in the same... Um, <laughs> on the, in the same um, output, the same screen, you know, the same scene. Um, so you'd often have like draw scenery and then draw game objects or something stupid like this. It's, uh, that's so trivially simple, but yeah, that kind of idea. This can capture multiple things. This can only write into one. So we want to be able to keep this. And if we macro expand map G into, um, you can see it's just with FBO bound, right? So it's exactly the same thing. But this makes it kind of tricky. Like, where do we have, if we have some transform feedback buffer hanging around somewhere, what is the lispy way of specifying that we want to write into this? Um, it's kind of tricky. I mean, do we just have a, a, an additional argument um, it's always available called feedback or something um, or TFB or something like that where you can pass in the other thing now this is kind of ugly because what we've said so far is that uniforms are essentially treated like keyword arguments uh, yeah keyword arguments and so now this makes this look like it's being passed in but then you're not able to access it. Like you would go, oh, what's this TFB uniform? And then you go and look at the pipeline and you can't find it anywhere. That's non-intuitive. Unless we, through some dark magic, we say TFB we make TFB look like this. And then we say set F or push something into the TFB. Now this isn't gonna work because we already know that the only things that we can write into the transform feedback buffer are based on the outputs of a stage. So there's no good us trying to pretend that this is a uniform because it's not gonna follow the same rules and it's gonna start tripping us up mentally. Um, it's too many extra cases to think about. So I don't like that either. Um, Oh, sorry to hear about the network error, Bond Pimp. So yeah. I mean, do we do, we, we, we legitimately could do uh, with transform feedback. You know, this has the, um, this has some nice qualities actually, because in this case, we're capturing all the feedback from both of these. In this case, we're capturing just one. We can capture into two different ones. And it fits with the with FBO bound kind of with structure that we um, have had before. Yeah, with, uh, with feedback buffer, yeah. <laughs> nice one. Yeah, we seem to be on the same page. Yeah, so maybe that, at least that again feels connected. One of the things we would have to do is we would have to, um, the transform feedback buffer would have to have a position. And we would have to say that, we would have to know how many elements are being written into this. Because if we do this, we need to start writing well, in intuitively, oh, weird, isn't it? Because every time we do with transform feedback, okay, let, let me let me re let me change it a bit. Okay, in this case, say we 
we uh, do a pass over a thousand vertices and they all write out to the transform feedback buffer. Okay, so that's a thousand things in the transform feedback. Now we do this. Does it start from the beginning of the transform feedback buffer again and wipe over everything we did? And if it's less than a thousand, then you're going to have 500 from the second thing and then 500, the last 500 from the first one. So that sucks. Um, so I guess what we need to know is, does the transform feedback uh, thing give us any way to know how much was written into it? Um, it probably should. I mean, that sounds like something that would be very sensible for it to have. So there are limitations on the number of outputs that can be captured. Again, that's going to be, we'll get to that. Um, captured data format. That's very interesting. Yes. Trans advanced into leaving. We won't have to worry about that yet. It's core since four, so it can be useful. See, yeah, this is the thing. Like you can have multiple transform feedback buffers and then jump to the next buffer. Um, you can also skip a number of components. That's very interesting. That sounds very useful. Um, double precision alignment, that gets fiddly. I'm, I'm not going to read that right now. Um, in shader specification, this is way too late for us to be able to... See, I want this feature to work on everything. Like, transform feedback ultimately has been available since... Um, has been in core since 3. So every version that we uh, support, supports this. So we could do it everywhere. Um... Yeah, it's interesting that it's called feedback, right, Barrett? Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of strange because the pipeline, the initial pipeline, let's do it this way, like data is traveling through, but now, and and the outputs are going into some buffer into your FBO, but now there's this other object down here that you're writing out to, and I think the idea is again that it was it was being used for doing some processing, and then because it's still on the GPU, your the next pass is reading from that data as well. So then you're creating this little feedback loop where one stage is writing out data that's used by another stage and it's never leaving the GPU. So it's kind of interesting. Um, that That's why I think it's the feedback side of things. Um, yeah, so we want to be able to gracefully, we want to be able to support a really good, useful set of uh, features in Keppel. You want to basically do everything that transform feedback can do and then gracefully... Um, adopt the newer stuff where we can. Okay, so doubles uh, came into GL later. They might have come in in four, so maybe this only applies where doubles exist anyway. So that's fine, there's an ARB, that's interesting. But what I want to know is, okay, once you have a program with the proper settings to record outputs, now you can set up the buffer objects to capture these values. If you wish to begin a transform transform feedback operation, you must bind one or more buffers to the indexed transform feedback buffer binding point. This is cool as well because this means if we don't bind something to this, it's still fine to run our shader stage. So that's kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure what happened. No, because we specify that those outputs are for transform feedback, they will just be ignored. That's cool. Um, this is done through the use of glbind buffer range function. Okay, so this is just talking about the interleaving and stuff again. Offset must be four byte aligned. That will matter um, unless it's double position at eight byte aligned. We'll keep an eye on that. That'll be something that Keppel will take care of for you. It's not something you should have to think about too much other than to, again, we'll document that that's what it's going to do so that you know where to read from. But actually, no, it should be fine. It's not a biggie. Feedback process. Once buffers have been bound, the feedback operation can begin. You can do this by calling the function begin transform feedback. This activates the feedback node. Um, oh, and it can be paused as well. That's interesting. Um, this will keep... Oh, wait, wait, hey, look at this. Okay, so all outputs that are set to be captured by the final vertex processing stage will be recorded to the bound buffers. These will keep track of the last recorded position so that multiple drawing commands will add to the recorded data. Bam! So this is cool. 
So then we can say the difference between this and this is that in this case, each one is going to write from the beginning of the buffer and overwrite potentially any data that's already in there. Whereas in this case, it will append. That's really logical as well. It, it looks nice in the code. So I'm really feeling this with transform feedback or with feedback buffer, whatever we end up calling it. This is going to be the analogy that we're going to use in Keppel. This feels, this feels right. It's kind of consistent with our other stuff. It's good, it's good so far. Um, undefined behavior results if your bound buffer ranges are not large enough to hold the recorded data. That's yes. So we need to keep an eye on that. So what we might do is, because you can specify, where is it? Oh, see, before they get actual dedicated feedback objects, that's interesting. We'll have to read this because maybe what we can do is we like if these are useful we can use these in for and up and we can emulate them below we do this in a couple of places so uh like in we have these composable like our, our, our shader stages are composed out of functions now um opengl does have facilities for doing this from for and up but because we're doing it in lisp and we control the compiler um, we do it on every version we support, which is cool. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. We, we might want to support this. Da -da 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 -da. All feedback buffer indices that have outputs assigned to by the current program must have valid bindings. Oh. Okay. So if you do this, you've got to have stuff bound. But that's okay. We can do that. We can we can guarantee that inside Capital. Like we just won't won't call this unless, like, because this is the way we're doing it. We're gonna have we're gonna have the object before we start requesting anything. So we bind it, we enable transform feedback, and we just let it happen. Um, the other thing we'll be able to do is because our transform feedback buffer targets are going to be GPU arrays. We know the length of them so that we can specify um, how many we might be able basically we might be able to make sure that this doesn't happen it's a tricky one because we could say hey um okay so when you map over a stream keppel looks at the length of the stream and says that's how many vertices you're going to do based on its index and some other details but it'll say this many vertex like re render this many things right there's many vertices so because we've got that length we can clamp the length to the size of the transform feedback buffer which will eliminate this now the downside of course then is it's not going to like, if you avoid undefined behavior and then you get a defined behavior which is strange right like hey, why didn't all of my geometry render? There's like a leg and nothing else. And it's because you're using a transform feedback buffer that is smaller um, than was needed. And so it stopped things to, to avoid a case where we would get undefined behavior. That's kind of cool. Like th this is something we'd have to argue out. It's a trade-off, right? We're, we're de de deviating from OpenGL standard behavior a bit. In doing so, we're making it more defined. We're also making it, it, it's kind of logical when you explain to someone why that would be clamped. But also, if their transform feedback buffer is very small or is already full from this, say this one filled it up and then this one tried to run. And so essentially nothing happens. It could be really confusing. You'd be sitting there saying, what the fuck? Why did, why did nothing render? It might also almost be better to get undefined behavior with garbage. So you can see the garbage rather than just being safe. I don't know. If that undefined behavior is fucking up other things in memory, then that's really bad. And it could well be because this is writing into a buffer. So if you overflow that, it could start trashing other data. So maybe maybe defining it and, and clamping is the lesser of two evils. 
The other thing that's kind of tricky is that when you're writing into a transform feedback buffer, it's writing primitives. And so if you've, let me, let me, let me draw this out because it's kind of interesting. If you have specified the quad, it is going to write, and, and you have an index um, array in your buffer, right? So you, your, um, your vertex information is for zero, one, two, three, and then you have an index buffer that's saying uh, the triangle is zero, one, two, and then zero, one, sorry, zero, two, three your transform feedback buffer isn't going to have four vertices in it. It's going to have six because it's the final amount. Also, if we're doing tessellation, if we're doing uh, geometry, we're not going to know how many vertices are going to be written into the transform feedback buffer ahead of time. In fact, we can't know that, which means we can't do this fix, this, this thing I was saying, hey, let's make defined behavior. That's actually not going to work. So we are going to still have this quality. Okay, so that's that's known now. This is going to be one of the things we'll have to teach people. Um, we can check this ourselves. This is something a Kepler can do for you and produce a decent error. The primitive mode must be points, lines, or triangles. That's interesting. No, that's, that should be fine. That should be fine. I can't remember, Don't isn't patches if you're gonna do tessellation? I can't remember. We'll look into that. Um, if geometry shader is active, then the primitive type, then it, then it is the primitive type output by the GS. Yes, okay, that's fine. Oh, right, okay. ah, fuck. So this has to match stuff based on the shader internals. This is really good. Like we're not going to have to get the user to specify this. We can query this from our um, compiler. So if we go back to REPL again and we translate, and we've got our compiled stage, we can go and look at our output variables. And what does this say? This is vector two. Oh yeah, we go primitive in, primitive out. This will be populated if. Uh, we're a geometry stage. It'll just work. So that information will be readable by Keppel, which means we can do this easily. That's something that would be trivial for us to do. Again, geometry, tessellation, that's fine. And it is the mode parameter of the command used to render. Again, that's something Keppel already knows, so this is easy. When it's active and not paused, there are certain things you cannot do. Change transform feedback buffer bindings, doing anything which reads or writes to any part of the buffers, uh, reallocating storage for any of the buffers, including about, oh, pardon me, including validation. That's good to know. Um, change the current program. Change the current program. Wait a second though. Ah, now that's very important. That affects what we were saying here. It means that this is okay, right? This is not okay. That's interesting. I wonder if there's any way we can make that say no. And yeah, there's no way for us to tell on the CPU side how many things have been written into it after a draw call, which makes sense because a draw call is you're like dispatching and it's going to be eventually, it's available eventually. So to find out the number of things that's written, you would have to flush the pipeline, which would be terribly slow. So yeah, that's fine. It's just a case of that's going to, that's state that we are not privy to until we want to pull down. But then again, we need to pull back the data at some point. So how do we do that? Oh, here we go, Barrett. This is the kind of thing you wanted to know. Why is it called feedback? So we can do this feedback rendering stuff. Is this just with four? Hmm. Then this can't be the reason for it being called feedback. Oh no, this is, this four bit is here, I think. 
Ugh. Oh no. No, this is uh this is related to this too. Interesting. But I like this. You can do a draw call, which is taking in data from taking in data that's been written into a transform feedback buffer. And that's gonna be really fast to dispatch. Um Topological combinators in your future? I have. N I don't know what that means, so I don't know. Would it suffice to know how many things have been um, have been reserved to be written into? I mean, we'll know the size of the buffer that we're writing that it is being written into, but we also know that it could overflow, and that becomes undefined stuff. Um, I think. I think we just have to. I think. I think you have to kind of work this stuff out yourself. I think that's what they're saying. Hmm, interesting. I mean, if you wanted to go more advanced, if you were really looking for that kind of control, then you probably wouldn't. I mean, there are ways of writing in. So there's something we haven't covered at all called SSBOs. They're not supported in Capital yet. But again, there's some really tricksy things you can do there with regarding to writing data into an SSBO um, from your pipeline. Just like, like how you read from a texture, you can write into these textures. But this is done um, without safety guarantees, so you have to do all the fencing and all that kind of stuff yourself. You have to be you have to be fucking careful. You have to use um, make a good use of uh, GLSL's atomics, and I haven't really done any work with GLSL's atomics yet. But um, yeah, you know, it's all in our future. Loads of things to still add to Capital, but there's still loads we can do right now. Okay, when using separate capture, there is a limitation on blah blah. blah. Okay, yeah, that's the total number of variables. That's fine. When use interleave and capture the limit and the total number of components, yes. Uh, when use advance interleaving, there's limits, yes. There's limits everywhere. Be aware of the limits, that's fine. Not a problem, not a problem at all. Okay, and this, oh, here we go. Pausing and resuming. I wanna know where else Where's the first point that pausing is mentioned in this document? Oh, it's in these transform feedback objects. Okay, so pausing is, oh, fuck, what do I do? Oh. No, that was, that was a cock up. Right. Um, so in these feedback objects, you can pause You can unbind, the f at this point, the feedback object can be unbound by binding a different one. The current program can be changed and so forth. Feedback operation can be paused indefinitely and is legal to read from buffers that are in a paused feedback state. Um, oh, to resume a paused feedback operation, you must rebind the exact program and pipeline object that was used when, all oh, right, that's boring. So even, even using these, um, we can't cover this case where we have two different pipelines trying to write into the same transform feedback buffer. Interesting. Interesting. Ah, oh, we'll have to be careful about it. I guess that's um, that's a piece of state we can keep track of ourselves. Should be fine. Because our TFB um, will just have will have a flag on it to say if it's been bound or not, and when it's bound and then the first pipeline that's that um is going to write into it is going to stick itself inside the tfb and then yeah so, and it will also check to see which program has already written into the tfb so the first one will come along and it would write okay first pass um is what's writing to the tfb then second pass would try and um write into it Keppel will detect that these two aren't the same pipeline and it's going to throw an error. And that's going to give us our safety that we otherwise wouldn't have. So that's okay. Um, yeah, that'll be okay. So even though we can't do this nice case, we can detect when it's going wrong. And we can do this case, which I think is still valuable. And this will be like with different streams.
feedback rendering is cool. Um, Hmm. Again, to do this, we're going to get into sync kind of stuff, sync object synchronization. I'm going to have to do that at some point. That's going to be really interesting. And, and this is another thing, like now Keppel is getting into the territory of dealing with multiple contexts and therefore threads and all this kind of stuff. We're getting into areas where we're going to have to care about, yeah, have to care about threading. Um, I don't, again, Keppel, I don't want Keppel to tell, to demand too many things. I don't want it to own how you do threads. Like it should work well with how you do threads. So that's going to be interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. I think, so I think we've got the basic idea of the pattern. Like we want to have some object, like we have FBOs, that's going to contain... Um, it'll probably be something like uh, make transform um, feedback stream and it's going to take some GPU array um, and then oh yeah that's going to be our TFB like this and then when we bind the TFB then the stuff that goes on here is going to get written into there yeah, that seems fair. So I think that's what we're going to do. Um, that's 10 o'clock. That's been our two hours already. So again, we, we got a bit of stuff done. We prototyped um, single stage pipelines for fragment stages. Um, we started considering vertex stages, which led us into uh, transform feedback buffers. And we've come up with something that feels lispy, that looks like it's going to be able to encode all the things that GL allows us to do with transfer feedback buffers. And that to me is a successful, successful couple of hours. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope this was enjoyable to watch. Um, I'd like to do a few more of these episodes where we just work on Keppel uh, because I feel like I've, again, when I've been doing the streams, I've been putting less time into actually working on Keppel and it would be good to do this. So if you're down for it, uh, we'll do a couple more of these kind of Keppel development streams as well. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot. And again, if you come up with ideas for these kind of, um, the kind of syntax or the analogies or the way that you would want to interact with it, or you come up with any cases that can't be, in, uh, can't be represented by this little, um, this little thing we've come up with so far, please email me or just bug me like I guess on Reddit or on YouTube or next week on the stream because uh, we're going to have to get this right because we need it. <laughs> right. Thanks so much, folks. Have a good time and I'll uh, see you next week. Ciao.